job done Scotland. Bag full of points and they've taken it to that final weekend of pool games against Ireland for a shootout in Paris to try and progress to the quarterfinals. They did everything that they could. Let's talk about it on the channel. I'm Tim. This is Egg Chasers. And uh, get stuck in in the comments. And um, what did you make of that? Because that was um, that was another tier one v tier two beatdown. Massive golfing class between the two sides. Loads of points. Very very one sided. What's weird about it is it kind of didn't feel like it in the same way as some of the others. And I think there's two reasons for that. Firstly, it's because it was actually quite exciting watching the points rack up because you know what potentially points difference could mean to this pool. So you always had half an eye on that. And whereas a lot of the one-sided results, France hammering Namibia, uh, and that that was never going to be a factor on who progresses to the quarterfinals and such. So that was different. And also, and I've got to give credit to Romania here, partly because of the fact that they kept on <laughs> battling the whole time. And as much as I kind of want Scotland to achieve their goals with the points difference just to give themselves the perfect possible chance. Didn't you just want Romania to score? See, a lot of people, understandably, talk about Pool B being the pool of death and the bad deal that Scotland got out of the equation, and they absolutely did. But the real victims of the pool of death are Romania because not only do they have to face three of the top five sides in the world, including the world number one and the world champions. They also have to face those teams when they need to score as many points against you as they possibly can. So poor Romania and fair play for sticking at it. Because uh, I'm back in the UK right now, I, I got back from Leon uh, this morning. I'll be going back there in a few days time. Uh, but I finally saw what my friends on their WhatsApp groups and stuff have been talking about. It's real. What a time to be alive. Samuel L. Jackson doing an advert for Warburton's Bread. I mean, bearing in mind it's during a Rugby World Cup, you sort of feel like Warburton's have missed a trick not using Sam Warburton. But it's Samuel L. Jackson, so I'll let that one slide. I mean, unbelievable scenes right there. And I saw the advert finally because I was watching ITV's coverage. So what can you say about this? Well, I, do you know what? Rather than dissect the actual game too much right now, one question I want to ask, and I kind of asked this in relation to the South Africa selection for Tonga for tomorrow's game. The question I asked earlier in the week was, which positions are up for grabs for South Africa when you look ahead to the knockout stages beyond this Tonga match tomorrow? And I'll ask the same thing with Scotland. Which players that started for Scotland in tonight's game against Romania, have given themselves a shot at starting in the big game against Ireland. Let me know in the comments what you think. Darcy Graham's got to be the obvious starting point there. I mean, he, he may well have got in to start on the wing on merit anyway. It's not that Carl Stain wasn't very good. And um, he offers something very different and, you know, a, a real physical edge. But Darcy Graham just does things which... Some other people can't. I don't know if you remember. I'm old enough to remember the Jonah Lomu PlayStation game. PS1. And I, remind me, I think it was. So you had Jonah Lomu was like the best player in the game you could be. He could just like run over everyone and was rapid and stuff. But then there was Christoph Dominici, I think it was, was the other great player to have in Jonah Lomu rugby because he was just really little, really steppy and you just an absolute wizard. And Darcy Graham has just got that Christoph Dominici thing going on, which I love. Isn't that sad? Like, no Joan Lomu and Christoph Dominici no longer with us. Two absolute legends. Darcy Graham had a great match. Uh, but a lot of Scotland players played very well. Do you know, one thing I was really happy to see towards the start of the game was Hamish Watson looking like a man who was out to prove a point. Because it's mad, isn't it? I mean, it, it says everything about how good Rory Darge has been. And other guys, you know, in, in the Scotland back row. But Hamish Watson was like, I've still got it and I'll show you. And that for that opening quarter, he was absolutely awesome. Fair play, that offload from Cam Redpath for the first try was uh, exceptional. And there were some wonderful offloads from Scotland. And I hope when it comes down to the tension of that game next week, I don't think they'll go inside themselves. That's not how Scotland play. I really hope they don't. Because 
yeah, it's not all going to come off when you, the better the opposition, the, the more calculated and, and you have to pick your moments, whereas Scotland were just trying it from everywhere. But that's how they play and that's how they win. And I think they've, they've got to kind of roll the dice a little bit. Although I say that and I, I remind myself that last night, Italy, a team who also just play from anywhere, play far too much. And um, it didn't work out well for them yesterday. So, But great to see Hamish Watson playing well. Um, yeah, that was a bit of a psychological challenge for Scotland more than anything, wasn't it? Going into a game knowing you have to score points and you can sometimes force it a little bit. And I think actually when, when Scotland just kind of relaxed and just did did what they did, the, the, the points came and the, the class showed. 13 changes. And this is the demonstration of how much better Scotland have got. They made 13 changes and you still looked at the team and thought, yeah, they're going to absolutely spank Romania. There's some class players, Chris Harris and and Ben Healy looks really good and Ali Price at scrum half, Hamish Watson. It's good. So, oh yeah, going back to that point, who would who would be pushing for a starting slot? So I think it's uh, Darcy Graham on one wing, Grant Gilchrist at second row. You could argue Ali Price at scrum half. Scotland have got lots of good scrum halves. Am I the only one that just really likes Horn at scrum half? I, I don't know what it is. He seems to be the third choice. I, I really like George Horn at scrum half. I think I'll probably go with Ben White again, and he's probably earned that on merit. But those are the three, I think. Other than that, I don't, I don't expect maybe one of the props, possibly. Although Jamie Batty, it's almost like Jamie Batty has um, upset a witch who's cast a spell on him that he will never, ever score a try in rugby union ever again. Because <laughs> he got as close as you can possibly get to scoring tries without scoring tries. So, yeah, I don't know what else to say, really. I mean, it was just a beatdown, wasn't it? It's, it's kind of, this is the disappointment with, with games like this in the Rugby World Cup, I guess. It's like when you actually come to sort of dissect anything. Is Well, you can't read too much into what Scotland did because they're playing Romania. You can't talk about individual performances too much because the obvious thing people will reach for is, we're only playing Romania. Um but one thing that I think is transferable from Romania to anywhere else is um, Ben Healy's goal kicking. That was a big positive. I actually thought he played quite well. Not totally sold on the moustache. I'm, I'm, I'm in favour of, you know, going for it. A bit of a World War One type moustache in general. I, I'm, I'll, I'll stay on the fence. I'll, I'll see how it... I'll give him a little bit more time to grow that out. See what I think. Um, at times, that Romanian defence was just heroic. They're clearly a really, really weak team. Can, comparatively but um i don't know i i just found something there's something inspiring about people that just keep getting up and just having a go and in contrast to italy last night where they just seemed disinterested and were clearly a lot better than they showed i actually thought <laughs> romania just their attitude was brilliant they just kept having a go and um I don't think they could have done any better, which tells you how far behind they are. Um, yeah, and I, I think Romania are one of those teams that I feel a little bit sorry for, why, that there isn't like a plate competition or a shield competition midweek during the knockout stages so that Romania could play teams at their level on a World Cup stage with big crowds, with TV audiences. That that just I just think that would be really nice. So, yeah. Job done. Oh yeah, a um, couple of things to mention. The um, all of the yellow card bunker decisions. I'm basically at the point now where here's where I think we're at now with the whole TMO bunker thing. We've stopped arguing about that was a red, that wasn't a red, that was yellow, that was basically because I think I don't know. I've done about you, but I certainly feel so confused about what what's a red, what's a yellow, why one's a yellow, why one's a red. That I'm just so bamboozled by it all that I've just kind of given up arguing. I'm just like, oh, okay, that one's fine. They've said that one's a red or well, whatever. They're all yellows. No bother. Um, there's some people that have pointed out that it seems to be the smaller teams get the thin end of the wedge on some of this. Um, yeah. But anyway, that is what it is. But one thing I did enjoy was that the... the 
the footage of the TMO bunker on the rugby. It was almost like we were getting a TMO of the TMO. It was like TMO inception. I want to see how many levels back of cameras we can go. Let's have a camera watching the cameraman who's watching the TMO and, and see how far we can take this. Because it, it can't be any more ridiculous than, than the, the process sometimes feels. So um, I'll leave it on that note. And I will just say that I will be in Paris for Ireland versus Scotland. First in the world versus fifth in the world. Celtic nations going head to head. One quarter final spot on the line. It's going to be box office. And I suppose technically speaking, South Africa can still technically go out as well. So all eyes on their game against Tonga tomorrow. They'll be wanting to rack up some points. And Tonga will want to be giving a much better show of themselves than they've managed so far in their, in their games. So that's tomorrow. Uh, and that's next week. And all those videos will be coming on this channel. So if you haven't already, please hit subscribe, like and leave your comments. I will see you on the next one.